Red Sea. Once the land of the Queen of Sheba is now inaccessible, forbidden. Even these air photographs were forbidden. This primitive fanatic land is ruled by a Muslim priest king called the Iman. It's virtually impossible to get into and out of Yemen. Amongst its few million impoverished Arabs, there lived an even poorer group, about 50,000 Jews, to be descended from the silversmiths sent by King Solomon across Arabia to the Queen of Sheba. To this day, the Jews of Yemen remain craftsmen, silversmiths, shoemakers, weavers. Living in hovels, forbidden to own land, they were paid in food. And in these last years of drought, there was very little food. Jews were pariahs. Muslims called them dogs, spat on them. And through the centuries, the Jews of Yemen clung to their Torah and their one hope that Messiah would someday lead them back to their own land. Now, at last, their elders spoke the word. Hear me, children of Yemen. I've been to the village of Rada, and from the street of the Jews, all of our brethren are gone. The Arabs say that the Jews have gone to Arden to meet our Messiah. We also must set forth. From Arden, the Messiah will take us to Israel. It is better to suffer on the way than to remain and die of starvation and sickness. For it stands written in the Torah that we must go forth to meet the Messiah. As it is written, so it must be. Only fourteen days from here, have courage, and in Arden we will be taken up on the wings of a great bird, and we will all be carried to Israel. It is written that we shall return on the wings of a great eagle. We have many days to walk, and our provisions are not enough. Some may perish on the way, but do not doubt me, do not turn back. Can we bring our children into a world where a Jew may not pass on the right side of a Muslim? In our own land, we will walk as equals. There each man may be his own master. Each man will have a right to labor his own field or to labor in the city. And every child will be taught to read in books and to write with his own hand. Our sores will be healed and we will eat good things twice and even three times every day. There will be work for every hand and we will have shoes on our feet. There will be no more Muslims over us. In Israel, a Jew may say his prayers out loud and no Muslim will throw stones. All this is true. In Israel, there are olive trees, figs, and golden orange fruits, and cities where even the authorities are Jews. Do not doubt me. Only a little further, and we will be lifted up and carried. Do not fear the evil bird, for the soul of our brother has flown ahead. His soul has already become part of the universal soul. He has gone before us to welcome us to our land. Do not turn back now. It would be a sin against those who have died on the way. It is not far to Arden. Only a few steps more, my children. You see, as your old rabbi has spoken, a machine has come to carry us. Exactly as it is written, we are moving swiftly out of the strange land. This is not yet Eretz Israel, my children. This is Arden. Here also our people have suffered at the hands of the ignorant. They have destroyed our holy places, but do not lose faith. From Arden we may depart. This is our encampment. These are our tabernacles. You see, I have not promised you falsely. We have come indeed to a resting place that was made ready for us. This was done by our brothers from far away. Here we will remain for seven days or a hundred days. It does not matter, for who will doubt our Torah now? 
These are our people. They are tall and strong, for they have lived in freedom. They are Yehudim from Israel, the land of our father, King Solomon. They have come to help us. See, we have brought with us our ancient holy Torah. For wherever we go, we shall live by the word of the law. Everything is here as it was promised. Water and food to refresh us on our journey. It is said that there are Yehudim who, like us, were dispersed in many lands. And those who fared better have sent all this to us. Our brothers from Israel clothe us who are in rags and naked. They strengthen us against diseases. Do not fear the mark that they put upon you, for it is a protection against evil, like the sign put upon the houses of the children of Israel in their flight from Egypt. This will shield us from the angel of death and pestilence. These are our brothers, emissaries from Israel. They tend the sick. They look into the sores of our eyes and make them well, so that we may behold Israel. This also is our brother from a land across the sea, America. From this far place, our brothers send help to us that we may return to Israel. Our time of waiting is nearly ended. On these papers, our names are written for the great journey. A day will come, and we will be lifted on great wings and carried in a single night to Israel. Behold, even as it is written on the wings of a great, strange bird, children of the Amen, hear me. As it stands written, so the day has come. Dance as King David danced when he beheld the tabernacle of the Torah. Sing our ancient songs, the songs of Solomon, that we have kept secret and have not forgotten in these thousands of years in our exile in the far land of Yemen. In 
one night, they spanned more than a thousand miles and two thousand years entering the modern world. and materials provided by funds raised all over the world through the United Palestine Appeal, they were soon at work. Some were in older settlements already established, and some went to new settlements that sprung up in the emergency. Though stunted by generations of malnutrition, weakened by tropical epidemics against which they had no resistance, the Yemenites retained an amazing vitality. They were quick to adapt themselves in Israel. The language was a cousin tongue to what they had always spoken, and many had spoken Hebrew as well. They were used to living on little, and even the restricted means of Israel's austerity period was abundance to them. find themselves needed, wanted, was wonderful to them, and heaven to their children. The Yemenites were excellent workers, proverbially cheerful, a singing people with beautiful, time-honored customs. They learned new techniques quickly, becoming mechanics and builders. Their traditional cleanliness, propriety, piety, their lilting speech, their grace and beauty gave Jews from Western lands a feeling of being linked directly to the time of King Solomon. To none of these, nor to Jews of any lands, wherever they may be, will Israel close its doors. the Yemenites would grow tall and strong. In Israel, the Yemenites belong. Israel, the Yemenites belong. 